Alrighty, so hey everybody. Um, what we are going to do right now is a very brief tutorial on uh, pipes. And so this will be an introduction. We'll be using um, a script and a real simple program to illustrate it. But first, let's let me grab the screen and want to go back to the slides that um, are related to the topic. All right, so you should be looking at um, page one of 10 of um, this overview slides that it talks about interprocess communications. And so briefly, I'll um, go through the first introductory slides and then we'll hone in on the slides that are associated with what we're actually going to do on our VM. So um, so interprocess communications is all about uh, processes which are abstractions for the programs that are running on the computer um, to be able to communicate. So the figure illustrates on the left two processes, processes communicating through one method, which is through a file. Um, the second method shown in the middle, the two processes are connected through um, what's called shared info in that figure, but that is the pipe example. And then the third on the right is the two processes are communicating via shared memory. And the purpose of this figure is really to show where the data that is being exchanged is located at on the system. So with on the left with files, the data is located in a file. With a pipe, the data is located um, in a data area that's managed by the kernel or the operating system. Um, and the way Linux uh, has implemented pipes, it has a uh, it uses a file system um, abstraction sort of internally. So it the the pipe is actually going to be located on uh, memory that is uh, maintained by the kernel, um, but in a using a file system abstraction. Um, but effectively, it's the same as stating that the memory is uh, managed by the operating system, by the kernel. Um, and then on the right, a, the memory is um, actually user space. And so that makes the shared memory IPC the most efficient. Okay, so moving on, um, this is talking about what Linux actually supports, um, half duplex pipes. Uh, and so now we'll state some terminology. So when we talk about pipes, there's two types. And so we'll identify them as named and unnamed. And we also need to know the keyword of um, related or unrelated processes. So two processes that are related have a inheritance um, association with them. So for example, a program forks a child process. Those are two processes that are related. Um, related processes can use unnamed pipes. And then the alternative is uh, processes that are unrelated. So that would be, for example, if we have two different programs on the same system, um, they, those programs are in processes that are unrelated, or we can have two instances of the same program um, that would be equivalent to two unrelated processes. And unrelated process communication um, it can use 
named pipes as one of its IPC um, mechanisms and other mechanisms that are appropriate for unrelated processes would be Unix domain sockets and also sockets. All right, so this page is illustrating the notion of a pipeline. Um, and so the example here is, let's say that we type the command who, pipe the output into uh, what's called a filter. So the sort is going to accept the input or the output from the first program in the pipeline. Um, and it, the sort program will do its thing and any output it generates, it will go, it, the program would think it's going to standard out, but um, as we'll discuss here for redirection, um, or to support a pipe, the um, the standard out of, in this example, the sort program is being modified so that the standard out descriptor is actually going to uh, be the descriptor of the um, input of the next pipe, so the next stage. So the sort, program is the writer. Um, and then WC, another program, um, the its standard in is going to be replaced by the output um, descriptor of that second pipe. And I'll skip going through this code here because we have other examples that um, we'll step through. Okay, so an example, the simplest example here is a one-way pipe. And um, this might actually be uh, similar to uh, the scenario if we were to redirect the output of one command to like a file, for example. So um, here the example talks about a program, so a parent process is going to create a, um, a pipe and it then will create or fork a child process. Um, the, so the pipe that is created um, there, and this will be clearer when we look at the example program that we're going to dig into, but the, the pipe command is being passed a, a pointer to a struct that's going to hold two descriptors. Okay, so the pipe command basically fills in the caller's um, array of integers, two integers, with the read and the write uh, descriptors for that pipe. And um, then the program is going to use the, the dupe to call, which we'll look at here shortly, um, to, uh, to do the, the, what I uh, went over on the previous slide, where the standard out of the parent is going to be replaced by the input descriptor of the pipe and the on the child process, the standard in is going to be replaced by the output descriptor of the pipe. Okay, and so this is the code that does that. Um, simple ex.c. Uh, we see the program when we start. This would be the parent process, and it initializes. Note the. Um, the pipe FD variable. So that's an array of two integers. So we'll access that via um, uh, index zero and one for the um, input and output descriptors. Um, the parent process creates the pipe 
and then it creates the child process. So in this block of code, if we the return on the fork is a zero, then we know that it is the um, it is the child process that is running. And so the, we're going to have the child process loop and it would be it'll be the reader of the pipe. Um, and so basically, as you can see, when it gets data from the pipe, it's going to just write that data out to standard out. Um, and then uh, we, at the end of the, that loop, so the loop will break when the, um, when it, when the pipe is empty. All right, so what I'm going to do now is um, switch to of our VM and go through an example that's um, it doesn't quite match the the remaining slides, and so that's why I'm halting. All right, so let's see. Okay, if you um, do a um, a JIT poll, you will see. Let me get to the base. The directories is going to be a little bit different on my machine from yours, but um, it will pick up at. All right, so you would go into C, C, C code, C uppercase C O D E, C code, and there you would see some of this. You would you won't see all of this, but where we're going to here is an IPC. That directory would exist on your um, local repo, and we're going to step into pipe concepts. Okay, and so. There's a number of subdirectories. Um, uh, this pipe concepts subdirectory is meant to be um, have a number of sort of example uh, scripts and programs that um, you should uh, sort of dig into and and work through. And so the for the next five ten minutes, the end of this video here will sort of will introduce you to the different subdirectories and my recommendation for what you should um, do. Okay, so call this the top level of pipe concepts. Um, there's a docs subdirectory and okay. And so in the docs subdirectory, um, there's no two sub further subdirectories, 1604 and 1804. So um, I have a number of uh, output from man pages that is related to pipes and some of the system calls that we're gonna be doing. And this particular VM, which I'm using happens to be a Ubuntu 1604. Uh, the uh, the documentation, the man pages will. There may be some changes when compared between 1604 and 1804. So that's why there's the two directories. And I actually have not yet uh, created the pages um, for 1804. So we're gonna stick with uh, 1604. And I'm fairly confident that for the, the things that we're going to look at, there's not going to be any changes because much of this has not changed for 20 years. All right, so um, 
let's see. So the starting point here in docs is concepts.txt. Okay, and this is, um, there's quite a bit of information in this. It's more Unix oriented. So it's a bit broader than just talking about pipes, but it has all the right pieces of the background all in the same location here and ends with a discussion about pipes. And so this should be the first thing to, for you to look over is read through concepts.txt. Um, and I'll likely come back to this, uh, but for right now, we're going to continue introducing you to this code. Um, <clears throat> all right, so the subdirectory Lambolt, if I'm pronouncing that right, it's actually a person, his last name. He has a web, um, like a blog and uh, these three programs are real simple examples that um, sort of go with the his blog. And I have the link um, for the right place to, to look at um, in each of the uh, programs. So there's a header and that gives you the link for his explanation of the code. Um, <clears throat> this code will we're not going to step into this code in this video, but it's um, it's very straightforward. And other code examples that we're going to look at will be um, similar. OK, where we are going to go for this video is learning exercise. And <clears throat> so there's. Um, and exercise.txt, that's what we're going to work through. And then there's the code that is associated with this exercise. So first, we're going to use scripts, bash scripts, um, and work with sort of the easiest pipe to work with, um, a named pipe. And so we're going to have um, one script is going to be the reader, and the other script is going to be the writer, and they're going to communicate over a named pipe. So that's sort of example one. Then there's different scenarios. Uh, so we have a program called reader fifo.c. Um, so in that scenario, um, the reader fifo is a real simple program. It does pretty much not quite what the reader pipe shell script does, but it's very similar. And so let, let me step into that program. Um, haven't cleaned up this code. I uh, probably got this from maybe the Stevens textbook or something. So it's uh, normally when I have code um, that we go through, I try to add comments and do things like there's a required parameter for this program, which would be the name of the pipe. And so um, notice that in main, we don't do a check to see if we got at least one argument, a parameter. And so that's bad, right? Uh, but this program, So the parameter, program parameter is going to be the name of a pipe. And the name of the pipe that we're going to use for this example here is, let's just call it test pipe, T-E-S-T-P-I-P-E. -E. Um, and so we pass that name to this program. It does an open. So this program would run after the pipe has been created. So it does an open, gets the descriptor, and is going to be, um, enters a loop where it's going to read 
um, from the pipe using where the pipe is mapped to the FD descriptor um, until the pipe goes away. Okay, and so let me basically just walk through the exercise. All right. Okay, so four parts to this. Um, there's no submission associated with this. This is just totally up to you to, to work through this. Uh, the, so part one is learn about pipes. And I walk you through um, sort of which man pages to look at. And then I point you to the docs um, directory. And I should actually include here readconcepts.txt. OK, and then again, we're still in part one of this exercise, which is just sort of setting up and for learning about pipes and what we're going to do. The pipe that we're going to use is a named pipe, and the command to create a named pipe um, from a command line is make FIFO. Um, from a program, the command is um, FIFO, or the system call is FIFO. So first, let's follow these directions. Uh, so part two, basically, we're going to what I'm asking you to do here is create a temporary working directory so that we can run the scripts and the programs. And so what I'm going to do here is, OK, so located in that directory learning exercise, I created a subdirectory called temp and a another subdirectory called pipe test. When I'm done, I'm just going to delete that tree, temp and pipe test. So we're in pipe test, and I've copied from the two levels up all of this stuff. Um, and so it's the that step, first step for you is to create the subdirectories, copy the script and that dot C into your temp directory. And now, so again, let's see which we're, so we're in part two of this four part exercise. Okay, so we're, this is using a named pipe. All right, so the exercise says, once we're located in our temp directory, let's issue the command make FIFO to make the pipe. All right, so I'm going to do a make FIFO test pipe. Okay, and if we do an ls-lt, we see that test pipe is now um, has a presence on the file system. Um, the uh, so the we we've talked about the permission bits associated with files. Uh, that very first bit in the ten bits associated with the read-write permission is. Uh, describes the type of file. P says it's a pipe. Okay. Um, so we are able to do that. So now we're saying open up two terminals in this subdirectory 
and the first use. So in one of the terminals, let's call it term two, um, we're going to sort of by hand first, we're not gonna use the scripts yet, just by hand, we're going to use the pipe. Okay, so we're going to sort of um, have, this will be my term two. And so to create a reader, I'm gonna use cat. So cat is basically whatever it reads in, it's gonna um, read out. So normally you pass to cat a file name and it would do an open and read it read it out to standard out. Here, uh, we're calling cat redirecting its standard in to the output of the pipe. Okay, so when the cat program does a open on standard in, it's actually doing an open on the pipe. So that's how it becomes the reader. So it's blocking waiting on data. Now the writer, okay, so we can do, let me go back to the instructions here. So basically just telling you to do an echo and redirect to test pipe. All right, so if we do an echo, hello world, oops, hello world, redirect, to test pipe. We see um, that cat gets that data. And there's a end of line termination, which causes cat to uh, quit. So that's what we should see. Um, <clears throat> so next, so now we're on to part three. So now we're going to sort of repeat that reader writer uh, illustration using a, a named pipe. And, um, but now we're gonna use the scripts. Okay, and so these steps basically are very similar to what we did by hand. So I'll have this term to the top terminal be the reader, but let's first, take a look at that script. Okay, so again, we haven't done uh, a lot of talking about bash syntax and that kind of thing, but this, this script is um, fairly straightforward. It's very, very brief. So this line here is, we could comment it out and, but on, if we keep it um, in, it actually gives us some, that's basically debug information. Um, so it tells Bash to give us, sort of puts it into a verbose mode and it gives some interesting output. So that's what the set X dash X is doing. Um, we basically hard code the name of the pipe in this script. So the pipe name is gonna be test pipe. Um, and, Okay, this is more just sort of in general, if you, in a bash script, if you wanna do a test, so an if, um, you would do the if, th so this is commented out right now, it's more for documentation purposes, if, and then open bracket, close bracket. So basically that's a, um, a, a test, it's either true or false, the contents, so it's, ask it what bash is, it's gonna treat that dash F space with a, the name of a file. It's, um, it's basically asking if that file exists. And in the, if it's true, that's good, take some action. If it's false, that means it's not, it wasn't there. And so, for example, we actually do that with this, so this is an example of what we just talked through. We're gonna say, if 
now the test that we're going to do on the file is, is it a pipe that dash P? That's what the test operation is. Is it a pipe? Does it exist? And if it's true, yes. If it's false, we're going to create the pipe. Okay. So by the time we get into this while loop, the pipe should exist. And again, this is the reader. So it's just going to loop and read from the pipe. And this is how you would do that in bash. So read is equivalent to a C um, read line or get character. Um, and it's getting that input. It's redirecting that greater than is the redirect um, the standard in. So the standard in is its descriptor is now going to be the pipes output descriptor. And if we ever see the words quit, that's what this script is going to use to end. So we should be able to just fire this up. OK, so again, the these plus space and then words is because of that set space dash x that's in the bash script. So it's giving us some debug information. Um, so it's blocked in the read of the pipe. So now we're going to, um, so we can actually do what we did in the earlier part where we did this by hand. So we're going to basically send over the pipe and our script gets it. Um, the other way to do this that um, is a part of the exercise is by using the writer script. And it's very similar to the reader script. So this is the writer. So um, there's an optional parameter, which is whatever we want to have written out. Um, so it's a string. So if what this test is doing is it's saying, if there's an argument, a parameter, then we're going to echo that parameter out the pipe. Otherwise, we're just going to say, echo out to the pipe just this string. All right, so we're going to run it without parameters. And this is the data read from the reader, right? OK, and now we're going to we're going to try and issue or send a quit to the reader. And we could do this two ways. We could use this script, or we can just echo quit um, and redirect out the pipe. I'll use this script because I want to make sure it works. So writer pipe, if we do quit, and it quits. OK, so we're almost done here. Back to the uh, write up. All right. Um, the final part is now, again, we're in the same directory. We don't have to change anywhere. Everything we need for this final part is here. We're going to use a program um, that we mentioned before, reader FIFO.c. So this program, um, you can build just by doing GCC reader FIFO.c and a dot out. Okay, so um, so remember on this program we need a parameter which is going to be the pipe name. So let's give it the pipe name. Okay. So the reader is set. And again, for a writer, we could do it multiple ways. If we had a program that did a, 
it opened the pipe and did um, a right. That's one way. So I don't have the right side of the program, but we what we will do is um, we can use the writer pipe script, or we could just um, do this by hand to generate data. So let's first do generate data by hand over the pipe, redirect the echo. So standard out is redirected to standard in of the pipe. It's going to send it. And our program received it. And we can also, uh, let's see, we can also invoke our writer script just with no parameters, then it'll send that canned message. And then finally, I'll just say echo quit, redirect to test pipe. And <clears throat> okay, so this is because this program is not exactly the same as the reader script, which I will try to um, add that to this program. But for right now, that is correct. It's not looking for the quit to terminate. And um, we could send a signal to this um, to basically close the pipe. And I'll, I'll just do a control C. OK, so to summarize, um, this so tutorial here was meant to introduce you to pipes um, with a little bit of discussion from the lecture slides and then a little bit of hands-on work with our VM, mostly involving command line uh, stuff. I'll have a second video that will talk further about the programming because it, it, there's system calls that we want to get comfortable with um, and but we want the that to be in a separate uh, video so I'm going to sign out and hope this video was helpful <laughs>